Okay, so I wanted to make this video for a while, and I don't know if I'm prepared or not, but let me just share with you some tips I've learned over the years in caring for pedispondens. Well, uh, the first thing is having water prepared. It's very important to let the water acclimate, so that means keeping it in jars for a few days so that it reaches room temperature, so the chlorine evaporates. At the same time, you want to condition the water to remove chlorine. That's pretty easy to do. And another important thing is to make sure there's no ammonia in the water. So if you have a glass jar you're keeping them in, notice some of the calcification along your jar. Now the best way to remove that is typically something with ammonia that'll just wash that right off but you need to make sure that you rinse it with water and let it sit for a few days before introducing a fish back to that environment the ammonia will wreak havoc and again this is a great sized jar to keep a pet in you'll notice the surface area is a lot better than some of the upright jars. Now bettas naturally live in these rice paddy ponds and they do well in just a few inches of water. You could fill it up to the top but the, bet the betta is a labyrinthine fish and it needs that large surface area to breathe. So I recommend keeping the water level quite a bit lower for newer fish and then gradually adding a little bit more. Now you might say that this jar is not the greatest to display a bit of, but it's a much healthier atmosphere than something that is um, taller or flatter or just wider. They need the surface area and they will just swim around it. And then getting to food, one of the common issues people have when they first get a betta is feeding it too much. Their stomachs are very tiny and they don't move around as much as other fish. They're not as active. They don't require as much food. They will eat and eat and eat, but that will cause them to bloat and their stomach to expand, which could make them sick. A lot of times you'll find things like um, these bits Here's some more of these pellets. And you'll notice that these jars are both full because the food isn't very good. Um, as far as pellets go, I've had the best luck with these uh, Hikari. They are the um, bed of gold. I've got two of them. The expirations on the data date back are like 2009 and 20. 11. I've used these in the past quite well. There's not a lot of food in there. It was about $3 for this, I believe. Compared to about $3 for this, but the difference is the fish eat these and don't really like these ones or these ones. Uh, but this ones are carnivorous and they do like insects quite a bit. So I highly recommend giving them some blood worms, some freeze-dried blood worms. Uh, be careful in handling these. Make sure you're not touching them or anything. But um, yeah, the blood worms are quite great as an occasional snack. Do not feed them only blood worms. They're very rich. I like um these granules, they do sink to the bottom and can cloud the water if you feed them too much, but the fish do like these. They are small enough for them to chew and they work really great. So again, don't overfeed your bettas. Give them a large surface area. They can drown in too much water 
So you want to make sure that your top is open so there's plenty of oxygen. And it's great to have a large surface area for them to swim around in. They do need clean water. Be very, very careful about the temperature of the water. They are tropical fish and they do like that water to remain consistently warm. About 75 degrees is good. And I think that's it. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. That's just kind of the basics, so enjoy raising better splendence. Thank you.